This lesson is solving two-step equations. And this lesson is really kind of the key to all of the solving equations work. Besides knowing the inverse, which is the first key, this then takes us to every other equation. Um, even though it's only two-step equations, the idea behind it is that we have to do the opposite thing in the opposite order. And that's gonna be true whether we have two or three or four or as many steps as we want. So if students can understand solving two-step equations and the reasons why we do things the way we do them, then as we introduce new operations, as we have more and more operations in one equation, students can solve it with ease. But the main part of this lesson though, I like to call socks on, shoes on. When students get dressed in the morning, they put their socks on first, then they put their shoes on, and then when they go home and they wanna get undressed, um, they have to do the opposite. So what they do is they take their socks off and then they take their shoes off. And they say, well, wait a minute, that, that's not right. You take your shoes off first and then you take your socks off. So when you have two things that you've done, you not only have to do the opposite, you have to do them in the opposite order that you originally did them in. So since socks were first and shoes were second, shoes have to come off first and socks have to come off second. So it's, we do things in the opposite order as well. When we solve equations, this means we do things in the opposite of the order of operations. We start from level one and we work our way up to level two and level three. In other words, we do the easiest things first. So first we undo addition or subtraction, then we undo multiplication or division, and then we undo exponents. And then we undo parentheses um, and, and so on, everything within there. So that's really the idea that we want students to get with this, is that we're going to do the opposite thing in the opposite order, and for math, that means following the order of operations. Today, we're gonna to be solving some equations that are a little bit more complex than the ones that you've seen previously. So let's look at this example here. Here we have three X plus four equals 10. And what's different about this one than the previous ones? Well, it looks like there's two different things happening to X. We've seen equations before where we've had one X and four, and we just subtract four from both sides. We've also seen equations where we have several X's, like maybe three X's, and what do we do then? We just divide things up into three groups. But now we have both things happening at the same time. So the question is, what should we do first? Let me ask you this question. In the morning, you might have gotten ready for school and you put on your socks and then you put on your shoes. Now, when you get home, you have to do the opposite of that. So what's the opposite of putting on your socks or your shoes? Taking them off. So off is the inverse of on. So when you get home, you take off your socks and then you take off your shoes. Well, think about that for a second. Do you do that? Do you take off your socks, then you take off your shoes? No, that's silly. You take off your shoes first, then you take off your socks. In other words, to go backwards, you not only have to do the opposite thing, you have to do it in the opposite order. So because your socks went on first, they're gonna be the last things to come off. Because your shoes went on last, they have to be the first things to come off. The same thing is gonna be true in math. Whatever we would normally do first, we now have to do last and we still have to do the opposite. So let's look here again at our equation. We know that normally we would multiply first and then we would add. So now we're gonna to have to do the inverse of those two things, but in the opposite order. So first we're gonna undo the addition and then we're going to undo the multiplication. So how do we undo the addition? The inverse of addition is subtraction. So we're gonna subtract four from both sides. Now we're going to do the inverse of multiplication, which is division. So now we will divide both sides into three equal groups. So to solve an equation where we have two different operations on X, we still use the inverse, but we have to do the inverse order of operations. In other words, instead of starting with the most powerful thing, when we do the order of operations, we start with the simplest thing. So first we're going to undo addition or subtraction and then we'll undo multiplication or division. And if we happen to have exponents, then we would undo those last. So to solve equations, we use the inverse order of operations.
Now you can go ahead and try some of these on your own. Feel free to use the materials as well, but then you can also do the writing to solve using those inverses. When we're doing this lesson with the students, we do want to try to be as careful as we can with our language. I am saying opposites a lot, but we want to be careful to use the word inverse as much as possible. Um, opposite is nice in a, in a general way because students understand what it means very clearly usually. Um, however, um, in mathematics, opposite generally means the inverse of addition. So that's really just making um, something negative. So um, because that's the easiest one and it's very common, we often say opposite um, when really we mean inverse. And so later on, sometimes students get confused when they see like 3x and they're like, oh, I need to take the opposite of that. And they'll try to do like negative three um, when really they have to divide by three because they're not thinking of the um, inverse or thinking of the opposite. So we just wanna be a little careful with that language. It's not imperative that we're, we're so strict with it that we confuse the students because sometimes we do wanna use the colloquial language so they have the understanding. But we also wanna make sure that we are using precise language when it's really important. And that word inverse is gonna be really key. I would like to make one more uh, comment about the original uh, equation that I did with the students for the two-step equations. So here we have 3x plus 4 equals 10, and we said that we need to subtract 4 first from both sides because of the inverse order of operations. But the truth is, we could divide by 3 first. Now when students divide by 3 first, here's often what they'll do. They will divide this by 3, and then they'll divide this by 3. And this is incorrect. And why is it incorrect? And when students do this, we can bring back to the materials and ask them, why is it incorrect? Well, we didn't do the same thing to both sides. We took a third of the right side, and we took a third of part of the left side. So we're not allowed to do that. However, we could divide the entirety of both sides by three. We could divide everything here by three. So what do we have now? We have that an x and a third is equal to three and a third, and now we could subtract one and a third from both sides of this group and get that x equals two just like before. So it can be done if we follow the rules. However, it's very complicated to do it that way, and oftentimes when we have several operations, it's not going to work. But if students want to divide the entire side by three, they can do that, and we should let them do that and encourage them and we should also encourage them to think of it this way with the inverse order of operations because they will need it. But as long as students aren't just dividing part of it, they can do it this way. And it's really interesting to see the kids who um, do that, even though we might consider that a mistake, it actually shows a very deep understanding um, that they're doing the exact same thing uh, to both sides of the equation, as opposed to the student who just divides part of it by three and there is a fundamental lack of understanding, and we do want to correct that. And we can generally do that through the materials, because as soon as you bring the materials out, they can see why that isn't going to work. So we can bring them back to the idea of the balance, about things being equal, and so right away, the material corrects them, because they can see it right in front of them. Now I'd like to show some more advanced work that eventually students can do, just to emphasize the importance of this particular lesson. So let's look at this equation here, which looks very difficult to solve. We have four plus five times the quantity of two x cubed minus four, all cubed again, equal to negative 36. And so what we can do for students is help them see that they actually can solve this equation if they know the inverse of every operation. So if they know the inverse of cubing, then they can go ahead and, and solve this actually right now, right after this lesson in abstraction. And uh, here's one way they can think about it. I'll ask the student to say, let's pretend that x was some number, like 37,452.7. Something crazy they can't do in their head. If we let x equal that number, and we just were working with this left-hand side here, and we want to simplify this, what would we do first according to our order of operations? Well, we would do what's in the parentheses first, and in the parentheses, we would cube that number. So the first thing we would do is we would cube. Then we'd have some gigantic mess here where x cubed is. What would we do next? We would multiply that by two. And now we'd have some big giant mess of a number over here. What would we do next? Subtract four. And that takes care of everything that's inside those parentheses. 
Now we have a big number in the parentheses. What would we do next? Well, we'd do the exponent, so we'd cube it. Then we have a big number here. Then we would multiply that number by five. And lastly, we would add four to it. So to solve this equation, we have to do the inverse of all this in the opposite order. So the last thing we did was we added four. So to solve this, the first thing we do is subtract four. The inverse of multiplying by five is dividing by five. The inverse of cubing is taking the cube root. The inverse of subtracting four is adding four. The inverse of multiplying by two is dividing by two. And the inverse of cubing is taking the cube root once again. So this tells us exactly what we need to do step by step to solve this equation. And these are all things the students know how to do. Subtract four divided by five, taking the cube root and so on. And so now students can solve this equation no matter how complex it is. And what's great is that when students learn a new operation like sine or like a logarithm, they know that everything has an inverse. And as soon as they know what that inverse is, they can solve any equation just by using the inverse order of operations once again. And the whole key to that is this lesson on two-step equations, that they really understand the idea of the inverse. Now, will they have a complete understanding by the end of the lesson? Probably not. But we just want to keep calling them back to that. And the socks and shoe story, I bring up all the time. And so this is just one way students can solve an equation like this. But this is where the work is eventually going to go in abstraction. But it all begins with these very concrete ideas. Thank you.